Hey everyone! So it is mid-September and the garden season is definitely winding down, which means I am already starting to think about what I'm going to plant next year. So what I wanted to do in today's video is go over what I've been growing this year and what I know I will and will not be carrying into 2022. So I have a list here in front of me of the plants that I will, that I won't, and that I maybe will be growing. I still had to figure that out. But luckily, the majority of the plants that I have in my garden this year will be returning next year because they did well and I love them so much. So that's what I want to start with are the plants that I will be growing next year. All right, so first up are the Supertunia Bubblegum Vistas. I absolutely love these flowers. I've been growing them ever since I've been gardening, so three to four years now. They've been in my garden every year. They perform great, and unfortunately this year is when they got attacked really hard with budworms, so they did pull them last month. But I love them so much, they look so great, that it's worth battling the budworms. Hopefully I do a little bit better next year so that they don't completely disseminate my plants later on in the season. But that's definitely something I'm going to include. And I'll probably end up planting it in the exact same places because they get so full and trail so far and so quickly. I really like to include them on the corners of my elevated beds. That's really the highest point in my garden, so I can put them anywhere lower. They don't have as much room to trail. So I will definitely be including those next year. I got mine this year, I think, from Home Depot. That's where they carry the majority of the proven winners plants. So I'll probably check there again next year. The second plant, oh, second plant is my new favorite for this year, which is the zinnias in the center bed. So what was in between the super tunias. These I got from seed from Johnny Seed. The variety is called Benary or Benary. It's B-E-N-A-R-Y. I'll list below the plants that I am talking about and then link to where you can find them or make a note as far as where I got them if there isn't a link. But these were fantastic. So up until this year, anytime I've grown zinnias, it's been purchasing the actual plant from a local garden center. And I feel like I did okay with them. A lot of them ended up dying, I think, because they were getting too waterlogged in a smaller container. And they also weren't very large plants. I think the ones that I did have success with maybe got a foot tall at the highest. But these were giant Benary variety, so I knew they were going to get very large. I didn't know quite how large they were going to get, but they are an absolutely wonderful centerpiece to basically the entire garden. So I will 100% sure be including those next year. I still have seeds from the packet that I got last year as well, and I will be using those as I go into the garden for next year. Um, I did end up starting... I think some of them indoors, some of them outdoors, and they performed really well both ways. So not only will I put them in the same spot in that center bed, but I might even put some in pots lower to the ground, just so that there's different levels of the zinnias themselves. But I'm really excited for them. I love them so much. They made an amazing cut flower. I think I got five bouquets so far uh, of basically vases full of zinnia flowers. So a must have in the garden, something I will plan to have in the garden, for as long as I continue gardening. Next one, dahlias. So this is another one where I've had some issues in the past. Similar to the zinnias, I've only purchased them as flowers, and I think also similar to the zinnias, they were getting too waterlogged. These don't like to have soil that's basically too moist, and I think I was putting them in pots that weren't porous enough or didn't have good enough drainage, and they just got too waterlogged, especially with the weather that we've been having. We'll, we'll get tons of rain for multiple days in a row. But this year what I did is I got tubers from a local garden center and I put them in larger containers and the containers I used were grow bags. So basically the most porous material that you can get. And they did phenomenal. Again, they're gorgeous dinner plate dahlias. The variety that I got was Penhill watermelon, although they're a bit more paler pink than what uh, was on the package for the Penhill watermelon variety. Although I do have a few now as we're getting later in the season that are a bit more vibrant pink, but I absolutely love them. Plan with those is to overwinter the tubers, so basically remove them from the containers, store them inside. I'll make a video as far as showing that process and then fingers crossed they come back next year. But not only that, I plan on getting more dahlias in more colors and essentially want to have um, the whole wall right over there where I have dahlias and sunflowers currently. I basically want to do the same thing next year, but with more. So I'll have more dahlias, more sunflowers just lining the whole back wall over there and I think that'll be really beautiful. 
speaking of, my fourth thing is sunflowers. So this year I did the strawberry blonde variety from Johnny Seed. Again, I started them from seed, started them outside. You don't really want to start the sunflower seeds inside. I think it's easier to start them direct sowing them outside. And again, they've been absolutely beautiful. And I don't know if it's me and my tastes, but I tend to not enjoy the all yellow sunflowers as much as ones that are you know, red or have some red in them or just different colors than the norm, but I might actually try some all yellow ones. I think just having a bunch of different varieties of the sunflowers will have a really cool look. So basically this year I had one variety of dahlias, one variety of sunflowers. Going into next year I want to have a bunch of different varieties and that way I can try out some new plants and kind of figure out which ones I like the best. Next, Gumfrina. This has been another one that I've absolutely fallen in love with. They did take a while to grow. I got them again as seeds from Johnny Seed. Basically, all of the seeds that I got were either from Johnny Seed or I got them from Home Depot. And the quality of the Johnny Seeds seeds has been amazing. So with the Gomfrina, I started them indoors. And again, for me, they just took a little bit longer to actually start to grow and bloom. I think if I start them a little bit earlier inside next year, then they'll bloom faster. But they've been amazing, especially this late into the season. They're essentially the showpiece of my garden right now. And not only that, but they are amazing to dry. And that's something I like to do going into winter to just use up all the spare time I have not gardening in the winter, I want to make a lot of dried flower arrangements. So they dry really well, they hold their color, and they hold their shape. So I will definitely be using the ones I have this year. I forget the name of the variety off the top of my head, but they're kind of like a fuchsia or a pinkish color. And then I'm definitely going to get more variety. So they have some that are purple, some that are more red. I want to include more in the garden going into next year. But again, I'll link the variety that I got down in the description below. Next on my will grow list are asters. Now these I sort of accidentally planted. So basically I got a seed pack from a garden center um, and then I brought it home, put it in my raised beds and then accidentally threw the seed packet away. So for the longest time I had no idea what was growing. I knew they were flowers of some sort but I couldn't remember what they were. And when they started to bloom a lot of you guys especially identified them as asters. And what I really like about them and again I didn't intend for this to happen because I had never grown asters before but they do bloom later in the season. So again it's giving me color that's kind of extending throughout the growing season where a lot of my other annuals have already started to kind of putter out. So it's been really great having those in the garden. Something I will grow next year and plan to know what it is when I actually plant it. Um, I don't have any seeds left, and this one I actually did not get from Johnny's Seed or Home Depot. I think they were from a chalet nursery, which is in the suburbs of Chicago, um, but I'll plan to get some more from there next year. That's also where I tend to get my garlic from. Next on the list is eggplant and okra with an asterisk. So, this is my first year growing both of those. I had never grown eggplant, I had never grown okra. I actually grew the okra at my husband's request because he really likes making gumbo and it, the okra isn't always available in the grocery stores. So I was like, sure, why not? I'll grow three okra plants, not realizing how much they produce. So we definitely have way more okra this year than we need. So my plan for next year will be to just grow one okra plant. Um, I actually will probably probably grow two because I'm always afraid of losing one so I'll have two instead of three but still they produce like crazy so if you're looking for something that produces a lot okra is definitely a plant that will meet those needs similarly with eggplant so eggplant I actually got as a plant and I only had one of them and that was the perfect amount because we still were trying to find ways to eat the eggplant based on how much it was producing so I'll 100% be growing those in the garden next year I think because I have a container garden, it's on a balcony. We don't have a ton of space. It's not like I have vast amounts of land to garden in. I like to focus on the vegetables especially that produce a lot. So for example, I like broccoli. I like the look of it, but you really only get one head where something with like tomatoes or eggplants or okra, you get a lot for the amount of space that you're growing in. So I'll definitely include those plants next year. And I don't know if I mentioned, but I got the okra seed from Johnny Seed. A uh, last plant that I'm definitely going to grow again are the snap peas. So again, it was my first year growing snap peas. I planted them in the spring. I've just said them again in the fall. They grew amazing. They sprouted so quickly. They looked beautiful. The ones I have have purple pods. So 
I just really like how they looked in the garden and they were delicious. Um, so because I have trellis systems and I want plants to grow up them just to make a pretty background in my garden, I found that snap peas are the way to go. And then obviously you get to enjoy the snap peas later. So that's kind of my list of things I'm 100% going to be growing again next year. What I want to do now is move on to the ones that I'm 100% not going to be growing. So again, this list isn't quite as long, um, but the first one is regular petunias. So I mentioned that I absolutely love the super tunias. I don't really love regular petunias as much. Again, the reason I like the super tunias is because they get full and they trail and they just keep growing and growing. Whereas I found the regular petunias that I had, they didn't get as full, they didn't trail as well. They kind of just like grew up and were a little bit spindly looking. So I won't be growing those next year. So super petunias are worth the hassle of removing the budworms. Regular petunias, for me at least, are not. Second plant that is related to the budworm issue are geraniums. So I have, let's see, one, two, three, four geranium plants in my garden right now. They're just kind of filler plants in pots to add some more color. But what I didn't realize until I started researching why there were so many budworms in my garden is that budworms love petunias and they love geraniums. And similar to the regular petunias, I just don't love geraniums enough to have plants that are going to be attracting the budworms to my garden. So I won't be including those next year. A sad one <laughs> that I won't be growing is a lemon tree. So I got a relatively small lemon tree March of 2020 and it did pretty well throughout 2020. I kept it outside. It produced a couple lemons, although it took forever for those lemons to grow. And then I brought it inside to overwinter because we can't leave lemon trees out in the winter in Chicago. It's way too cold here. And it had a lot of issues with spider mites. It just wasn't looking very happy. I did have it under a grow light, so it was getting more light than it would normally if it was just using natural light through the windows. But it still just really struggled. And when I brought it outside again, it did seem to flourish a little bit more, but it didn't produce any blooms. And then a few weeks ago, or maybe about a month ago now, the, all of the leaves were just covered in yellow spots. And no matter what I tried to treat it with, the leaves just kept falling off and dying. So I did end up pulling that. And I don't think I'll grow a citrus plant just because it seems too much of a struggle. I don't think they're just naturally happy in this environment. Unless someday I get a greenhouse that I can have as like, I don't know, 40 to 50 degrees in the winter and store them out there. But it's just too hard, at least for me, to move them in and out and really keep them happy. Plus, I got two lemons and it took eight months. I think for me, I can just run to the grocery store and grab them, even though I do really like the smell and the look of having those plants. Next one I'm definitely not going to do, and kind of the last one on my 100% sure not growing next year list, are sweet peas. And I'm also sad about this one because from what I saw from other people growing them, I was so excited to grow sweet peas. They look beautiful. I like sweet pea scented things. I've never actually sniffed real sweet peas, but things like lotions and candles. So I was also excited for them to smell. But for me, well, there was just a few issues. Again, I think it could have been issues with the weather in general, but they bloomed a lot later than what you would typically expect. And they didn't put out as many blooms. And I also didn't smell any of the scent that people say they really enjoy. So for me, it just really wasn't worth it. I originally had them trellising up where the snap peas are trellising this fall and they just didn't look as full. They didn't look as great. I don't think it's really worth me planting them next year. Maybe I'll try a few years down the road, but there's more things that I think will do better, perform better, look better in my garden in the limited space that I have. So sweet peas unfortunately have been knocked off the list. Last part is going to be my not sure plants. So plants that I enjoyed enough, but I don't, again, really know if it's worth the hassle to grow them. Um, so first one is going to be the marigolds. Now, not that I'm not gonna have marigolds in general, but I'm trying to decide if I really wanna have the three to four foot marigolds that I have now. So I know I've mentioned this before, but essentially I bought marigold seeds from Johnny Seed with the thought to have it companion planted in my 30 gallon containers where I'm growing tomatoes and peppers. So in my mind, I would have my tall tomato, tall pepper plants, and then marigolds that were a few inches taller around it. I did not know that there are marigold varieties that grow so tall and I didn't realize that's what I had bought. I mean, 
it was obviously on the label. I just didn't read the label, but I didn't realize that's what I had until they started growing over the peppers and the tomatoes that I had them companion planted with. So although I like the color they add to the garden, I like the look of them overall. I just don't know if I'm going to grow this specific variety or if I do, I'm 100% not going to companion plant them with anything. So we'll see. I actually don't know if I have any of those seeds left. That'll probably sway me one way or the other. If I have the seeds, I'll plop them somewhere. If I don't, I don't know if I'm going to actually go ahead and buy them again. Next on my not sure list, and this one is kind of hard, but it's regular tomatoes. So I've grown regular tomatoes for the last three years. At the same time, I've always grown cherry tomatoes, a varieties that just have smaller tomatoes themselves. The cherry tomato types do really well. I always get a ton of them. They always look beautiful, healthy, taste delicious. My regular tomatoes don't always do that great. I know it's normal to grow tomatoes that you don't see in the grocery store, so they'll have like splits in them or markings on them because again, it's hard to control the rain here because we'll get a ton of rain and then it, that causes the tomatoes to split. So for the larger ones, I think just because they take so long to develop and grow, there's more issues that can arise from that. And I'd say out of my tomato plant this year, so I had one cherry tomato plant, one kind of regular sized variety. I think I maybe got three from the larger variety that I could actually eat that weren't completely damaged or infested or there was some other issue that really didn't make them edible. Or maybe I could cut off like a small piece of them. So I don't know, it seems to be something that happens every year. If you have tips for container tomatoes of the larger variety and how to make sure you get a lot that look good enough to eat and are good enough to eat, definitely let me know and maybe I'll give it a go again next year. Uh, the third and final thing on my kind of not sure list is garlic. So I got my garlic, like I'd mentioned, from a nursery in the suburbs. And I planted them, they sprouted, but they just, the bulbs themselves were really small. And I don't know if it was anything I did that was wrong. It definitely could have been. You know, I had them in, in a container. I planted them with compost. I made sure that they were getting moisture consistently. But the bulbs just weren't very huge. And again, it's one of those things, is it worth the time and effort to grow them if you're not going to get a good harvest when you can just go to the grocery store and find the same thing when you need it? So again, that's kind of on my maybe list. But that is everything that I have for now. It's definitely fun to start planning for next year, even if we're still currently actively gardening. Um, but I do like to get my seeds ahead of time because obviously the longer you wait, the more people are gonna start thinking about their garden and sometimes the seeds that you want will be out of stock. So I'd like to start thinking early about what I'm gonna do for next year. And it's really been interesting this year because this was one of my largest gardens or the largest garden I've ever done. So I had a lot of plants that I hadn't done before or hadn't tried before. So it was really a cool experience to kind of see what worked and what doesn't. And I also know that things can change every year. Like I might try dollies again next year and they'll be absolutely terrible. Uh, but the things that did really well this year made me really excited and I'm definitely going to include them next year in my garden. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.